It's a family curse handed down from generation to generation, and there's only one radical way to stop it. The two young women you're about to meet are just starting out in life, but there's a huge shadow hanging over them. Stacey Gadd's only 22, Crystal Barter is 25. They've watched their mothers and grandmothers fight breast cancer, and they know they could be next. Both have inherited a genetic flaw, which is likely, sooner or later, to cause cancer. But Stacey and Crystal aren't going to wait. They've decided to act now, a decision they hope and pray the next generation will never have to face. Sunday Arvo in the Adelaide Hills and a traditional Aussie barbecue. <laughs> well, you got that one, buddy. I want to droop a bit. Hang on. Hang on. Pull it up. But out here, the Gad family is doing things a little differently. Good boy. It's a celebration of boobs. I mean, who doesn't like boobs? <laughs> the reason for all this Yay! is that at 22, Stacey Gad has decided to have her perfectly healthy breasts surgically removed. I'm eating the nipple. <laughs> You're 22. Mm hmm You're not married. You nope. haven't had any kids. Nope. Do you like your boobs? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do. Will you miss them? Um, I, I, I might miss them, um, but then I won't have the worry. <laughs> have them in nipples. <laughs> the worry is breast cancer. Point. I thought about Stacey's mum, Lorraine, has battled it for decades. It killed her grandmother. And genetic testing has revealed both Stacey and her sister have inherited a rogue gene. Stacey, look at your cleavage in that photo. That gives Stacey a 60% chance of getting breast cancer. And she's not happy with those odds. What about the fact that you might never get cancer? That's OK. You know, I, I could sit back and wait and see if anything ever did happen. You know, I could um, have my regular MRIs, my ultrasounds, mammograms, but then you're kind of still waiting. I don't want to have to wait. I don't want to have to, to think, you know, is it going to be this year? Am I going to get cancer this year? I don't want to have that worry. I want to remove that worry. Would you have done what Stacey's about to do? In an instant. Hello, ladies. How are we today? That seems such an easy question to answer. <laughs> But could Lorraine really have been so certain in her early 20s, before the first signs of cancer began? Thank you, girls. Hi, two lovely eggs. Genetic testing wasn't available back then, so this determined and optimistic woman wasn't to know what she'd have to endure. Enjoy, ladies. <laughs> it's incessant, the issues that I've had with the breast cancer. Every five years, I seem to get a recurrence. And so there's more chemotherapy, more radiotherapy, more hair loss, more sickness, more side effects. But it doesn't get any easier. I feel it gets harder. But I deal with it and I move on. What choice have I got? I don't want Stacey to deal with any of that. Brilliant. Okay. Stacey is one of the youngest Australian women ever to have a preventative mastectomy. We're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> With your eyes only looking at me. Today, she's having professional photos taken ahead of the operation. See, it's not painful, is it? Nope. <laughs> In the 10 years since genetic testing became available, more and more young women are choosing this radical surgery. Kind of like your arms. For Stacey, any final doubts were erased by one chilling coincidence. This is the very room in which her mother recovered from her most recent cancer surgery. 10 minutes before you go in, what scares you the most about all of this? I'm scared of how I'm gonna react when I wake up and realize that my breasts are gone. Um, that's the thing that has probably worried me the most. Okay? Yep. And we'll be here when you wake up. Good, good. Okay. All right. I love you lots. Love you too. Mwah. Yeah. See you later, Pip. Here we go. 
The operation carries major benefits. Having this sort of surgery dramatically reduces the risk of developing breast cancer. That's the real benefit, but it comes at significant cost. You can't return to the way you were. Geneticist Graham Southers has the delicate task of helping families like Stacey's peer into their medical future. Knowing what horrors your genes have in store can either be seen as a modern blessing or confirmation of an ancient family curse. Once the mutation is found, they can say, you know, thank goodness, now I know what I'm dealing with. What's the other end of the scale? For some people, finding out that there is an abnormal gene can bring a, a deep sense of anger, a sense of powerlessness, that this gene is there, I can't change my genetic nature, I'm, I'm doomed. I always say that I feel like a ticking time bomb. Who's that? Oh, Riley, hold on. At 25, Crystal Barter has grown up with what can only be described as a sense of doom. Her family carries a flawed breast cancer gene so ferocious, it struck down at least 20 women in three generations. Jump, jump. How do you feel about your breasts? I hate them. What do you mean? Like they're going to betray me. Ever since my mum got breast cancer and they told me I've got a 90% chance or more of getting breast cancer, you lose that, that closeness to your breasts. You feel like they're, they're a part of you that you don't want. Crystal's great-grandmother died of the disease aged 69. Her grandma Val was 44 when diagnosed. Her mum Julie was just 36 years old. Each of them carries the burden of having passed on the gene to their daughters. So mum and I talked about this and I said, I feel like I've given this to my daughter. And mum said, well, what about me? I've given this to you. Mm -hmm. And it's just, we're just so strong as a family, but it's just breaking us at the moment. It wasn't until after she married that Crystal was ready to undergo genetic testing and hear that, yes, she carried the breast cancer gene. Three years on, after breastfeeding sons Riley and Jai, she's determined to break the cycle of cancer that's plagued her family. I'm not going to wait for it to come get me. I'm going to act now, I'm going to have this surgery, and that'll be the end. People looking at this will say, this girl is traumatised. You've seen your mother go through it, your grandmother go through it, and that trauma is informing your decision to take this drastic measure. Why wouldn't I be frightened? Why wouldn't I want to do whatever I can to not be threatened and taken away from my babies? So for you, that's entirely rational. Oh. Definitely, I have been traumatised. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but it may already be too late. Shortly after making the decision to have her breasts removed, doctors found changes in Crystal's breast tissue. They say that probably means the start of cancer. For Crystal, it was devastating news. She might have waited just a month too long to have the surgery. I just didn't think something like this had happened so soon. And it kind of upsets me because I just... It's OK. Can you stop? <laughs> it's all right. I you just sure? thought I was beating it. Mm. And that traumatises me even more so than losing my breasts. That you thought you were in control? I did, and it aggravates me. It does. I was so... I just don't know when it's going to end. When is this cancer in our family going to end? The surgery is now urgent. Crystal's operation is pushed forward. The doctors are keen to get the tissue out before any suspected cancerous cells can spread. You seem very calm. I have to be. You're doing very well. Yeah. I said goodbye to my boobs last night and Chris took photos of them. <laughs> and he said that They've done their job. Yeah. They've fed, fed my babies. <laughs> so I'm not... Yeah. I'm not sad. Yeah. Just nervous. Yeah, I know. Wait till I get my calm teeth, then I'll be right. <laughs> I'll be talking gibberish. <laughs> Thanks. No worries.
Dr. Mark Siwak is Crystal's surgeon. So what we're trying to do here is uh, through a relatively small incision, dissect under the, the skin and remove all the breast tissue that puts her at risk of developing breast cancer. So this is a tissue expander. But with modern plastic surgery techniques, removing that risk no longer means terrible disfigurement. And here we go. So you can see the breast reappearing. The nice thing about this approach is that um, she comes into hospital with breasts and she leaves hospital with breasts uh, with a very much reduced risk of breast cancer in the future. But the vital question remains. Will the breast tissue removed during crystal surgery already show signs of cancer? For families who carry the breast cancer gene, surveillance and surgery are the best ways doctors can think of to reduce the risk. But what if you could eliminate the faulty gene before a woman was even born? Well, earlier this year in Britain, a family did just that. Welcoming into the world a little girl they were certain was cancer-free because the embryo had been screened to ensure it didn't contain the genetic flaw. Good morning, gorgeous girl. Hi. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Back in Adelaide, after six hours of surgery, <laughs> our first patient, Stacey Gadd, has no regrets. It's done fabulous. Yeah. She's feeling and looking better than expected. Morning. Look at that. You've even got a cleavage still. How good is this? Yeah, they're not so bad. And not even very bruised. That's brilliant, isn't it? No, I thought it would be um, hey? a lot more confronting than that. See, you've done very well, haven't you? I'm really pleased. And you know what? This is the worst I'm going to look. You know, from, from here on in, it just... It'll just get better. Good. Yeah, do you mind if I just have a quick look and make sure that everything's healing up well? For Crystal too, the surgery has gone well, but in her case, there's more at stake. She still doesn't know if the cancer had begun. That's normal, as long as we get the pain under control. Finally, four nerve-wracking days after surgery, Dr Siwak delivers the news. Um, look, the pathology results are very good. There was no evidence of any cancer there or, or any DCIS, which is, which is Chris, really good. Get up here. It's good. Oh. <laughs> so, Doctor, does this mean that Crystal will never have anyone say to her, in her life, you have breast cancer? It's, it, you've probably spent enough time with doctors to, to know that they're never going to give you 100% uh, guarantee, but uh, the chance of her developing cr uh, breast cancer in the future is less than 1%. Crystal will almost certainly be the first woman in four generations to avoid the family curse. That's great. News that's almost too good to believe. He's just told you you have virtually no chance of ever getting breast cancer. It's so good. It's great. I, you know, my mum had to sit there when she was 36 years old and be told that she had breast cancer and I'm 25 and I've beaten it. And that is the best feeling. It's the best feeling. Oh, sweet. <laughs> We're so happy, darling. It's the it's best. Happy. It is. It's fantastic. It is. <laughs> Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.